Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with the Movement System. In this video, we're gonna talk all about strength conditioning for basketball. So we're gonna review both a macro cycle and a micro cycle of a basketball athlete and how we would train them. So we're gonna talk about the general characteristics of basketball, the important sport qualities. We're gonna go position by position and talk about the differences that we might be making as a strength coach. And I'm also going to do a podcast episode all about strength training for basketball. It's going to go way more in detail. So if you want to watch that, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the Movement System Podcast. Let's go ahead and dive into it, though. Okay, so if you're a strength coach working with basketball athletes, some general characteristics that you're going to be emphasizing are things like anaerobic capacity, change of direction, vertical jump, and qualities like that that are going to be relevant for the sport. That said, though, we're going to have different goals for different parts of the season. So off-season, we may be focusing a little bit more on that strength hypertrophy, a little bit more on the aerobic side. As we move into the preseason, we're typically introducing more volume in the way of plyometrics, change of direction, agility work. And then as we go in-season, that's going to be our most sport-specific type of training with obviously the most emphasis on practice and game performance, and then maybe power exercises and some lower volume strength work. Now, depending on the position that you play in basketball, you're going to have different needs. So basketball positions might look something like this. To simplify, we're just going to say center. What are the needs of a center? What are the needs of a guard in general? And then what are the needs of a forward? So a center is going to have the most physical contact, usually the tallest and biggest player. And for this athlete, we're going to need to focus on power, size. And for that center, strength is actually going to be a little bit more important than speed because that center is going to have to actually move through a lot of contact with other players to get to the rim. When we think about a forward, that position is going to have a similar physical contact need. So this player is typically still needs some size, some strength, but this player also needs to be fast. So they actually need to be able to change direction quickly to make quick pivots, uh, to make quick cuts to the ball, get around other players, uh, picks and stuff like that. So for a forward, we're going to focus on speed. We're going to focus on vertical jump. We're going to also focus on strength. And then for a guard, this is typically the player that's going to be the fastest and the most agile. So this is the player that's going to have a little bit more time on it focused on max speed. So where centers really are never getting to a max velocity sprint, a guard is actually going to be really quickly sprinting to position and also really quickly turning and getting in position to catch ball, pass, shoot. Uh, and or do some sort of move. So for a guard, a lot of focus on speed, agility, quickness, footwork, not quite as much physical contact, not quite as much of a need of strength and size. Uh, typically a little bit of a smaller player is playing that guard position and that's what we're gonna focus on for them. Now, one thing that we wanna think about, and I'm gonna dive into this more on the Movement System podcast about this topic, but we also can consider where that individual player is and where is their highest level of performance. So, for example, what I'm saying is if we have a high school athlete and they're a small forward in high school, but they have the potential to be a center or they have a potential to be a power forward at the college level, but they are gonna need 15, 20 more pounds on their frame, and we're training them in their senior year, junior year even, it may be more of a priority for us as a strength coach to spend time building their size and building them up in terms of their frame to play at that next level. Because if we are as high school strength coaches always just focus on speed and power and we just get these scrawny little kids that are freshmen and scrawny little sophomores and scrawny little juniors, they're not gonna be able to actually make that jump to the next level or when they do, they're gonna get injured. So it's really important to think about the level that your athletes are at and even if speed and vertical jump is really important for their sport, we also need to be making the best long-term decisions to make sure that our athletes are actually gonna be healthy and effective at that next level. So it's important to get your head around the needs analysis and the overall big picture. What are the goals for these athletes that I'm working with? I think even whenever I was in my strength and conditioning internship working with Olympic sports and basketball players at Ohio State, it, it was really tempting to just think about the coolest exercise, who can jump the highest, uh, all that cool stuff. But really, a lot of these athletes are not that movement competent and really just need uh, these basic energy systems training, basic movement skills, uh, and also just stability and strength to not get hurt. Okay, so in terms of what kind of tests we wanna do with these athletes, we're gonna focus on tests that are energy system specific. So what we're gonna do here for testing is something like a T-test. This is a test that involves sprinting, shuffling, and then backpedaling, which are all really relevant attributes to the sport of basketball. So I really like the T-test for basketball athletes. 
One of the more obvious tests is the vertical jump. Typically, this is a test that we're gonna focus on in the preseason and in season as we get to the point where that vertical jump becomes most important and one of the primary qualities that we are training. And then from an energy system perspective, we're gonna be really focusing on the anaerobic energy system. So most basketball plays are lasting 30 to 90 seconds of effort. Some plays will last longer, two, three minutes. Um, and sometimes a play will last really short and, and have those really short, quick bursts. But for the most part, the primary energy system of basketball is gonna be that anaerobic glycolysis with some needs for the ATP PC system for power, like jumping and cutting. Um, but it's really important that our athletes have a good anaerobic capacity. And a test for that is the 300 yard shuttle run. And then fun fact, one of my few personal training clients is actually Chris Holtman, who's the head basketball coach for Ohio State. And he's really big on having all of his guys run the mile run in the off season. And we as strength coaches know that the mile run is not really relevant for basketball in a sense that like you're not gonna run a mile straight. It's more of that anaerobic effort. But this does make a lot of sense as an off season type test. And the reason is that he wants his guys to just generally stay in shape off season, not to come in just really out of shape. So just having a general base of aerobic work off season is really important for then setting those players up to be healthy as they go and enter preseason training to do more anaerobic type efforts. And as a strength coach, we are typically working one level up. So even though their energy system is that anaerobic sport effort, so it's 30 to 90 second effort bouts, usually off season, we're working a little bit above that to build a base. So in the case of a basketball player, it's those five to 10 minute type efforts to build a base of aerobic capacity. All right, so now let's go ahead and dive into analyzing the macro cycle and the micro cycle of a basketball program. All right, so what you'll see here is a macro cycle for basketball. And this was actually written by Trevor Boyd, one of the participants in, a, in my strength conditioning mentorship program uh, a little while ago. And what you can see here is he designed this to be a college men's basketball prep program. So you'll see the months laid out, January through December, uh, and you'll see different phases of training. So you could see uh, this does fit the college basketball program. This would need to be adjusted for the high school level. But in July through mid-October, you're really in that off-season accumulation. And we're going to talk about what that means in a second phase. But that's basically off-season. You can see uh, it's laid out as aerobic base work. And then as we move into the October, November, December range, this is our preseason blocks. And uh, those preseason blocks are really what we call an intensification phase. So typically this is where our volume is going down and our intensity is going up. Um, accumulation phase is when we're accumulating volume. Uh, it's more of a focus on hypertrophy, aerobic base. Um, and then in that preseason, again, that intensity is going up. And then the way that Trevor put it in terms of emphasis is a realization block. And that's just meaning in season. So that's when we're potentially realizing all the gains that we've built upon from off season through the preseason. So this is where we're realizing our gains in uh, vertical jump, in power, in speed, in change of direction. So that realization block is gonna be power focused. Uh, we're gonna be maintaining our strength, but not with a lot of volume. So typically this is lower volume work. Uh, you're gonna be doing this around games. So you don't wanna be putting a ton of volume in so that the athletes have tired legs and can't jump in their game. Uh, it's more enough to maintain their adaptations in terms of strength and also peak adaptations in terms of vertical jump and power. And then January, February, March is the most sport specific, again, in season. So that's when we're gonna be doing the most sport specific drills. Again, there's a lot of ways to build a macro cycle, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of how you can lay out that full year plan from off season, preseason to in season, and what type of training decisions this can guide. Now let's go ahead and dive into an actual micro cycle of a few workouts that you might be doing in the preseason. So what you're seeing here is a preseason micro cycle, meaning it's just a week of training. Uh, we might even see a day three in here, but uh, this is just to give you guys an example of a couple different exercises you might do about what volume we might be working at. Uh, and again, these aren't perfect exercises by any means. These are just some examples that may fit. Uh, again, you can def decide based on your own athletes. But what you'll see here is a box jump, push jerk, barbell back squat. Uh, so we're starting with those plyometric movements. Really important that we put those first. We express really high power output with a lot of rest. Uh, that box jump is obviously really relevant for athletes who are gonna be doing vertical jumping, getting rebounds, things like that. So then you can see we're moving on to a push jerk exercise and this is an exercise that's explosive. We're focusing on that triple extension through the lower body. Uh, we're not getting into deep knee and hip flexion here. So this is more just that top end range. 
Um, and then we're also working a little bit of upper body in there. So I, I think this works really well for basketball players um, that do have the adequate mobility to get overhead. Uh, next, we're working into a barbell back squat. So we're actually loading these, these up pretty heavy at 85% one rep max. Strength emphasis, we're still at four sets here. So you can see this is early preseason to the preseason uh, that we might be doing these workouts. So four sets of four, four sets of six, really good set and rep range. And again, not being afraid to really load these up. Uh, we're working in some pushing and pulling here in C2 and D1 with the incline bench press and with the bent over row. Uh, three sets of six, three sets of eight on those two. Uh, heavy loaded movements again with a strength emphasis on those two movements. And then ending with a dumbbell step up, two sets of 10, a little bit of conditioning there. Um, not too high a volume, but that fits well in the preseason here. And then day two of the preseason workout here that you'll see is depth jumps with a lateral jump. So this you can do a number of different ways, but depth jump really just means we're stepping off of a box and then absorbing some landing on the ground. You could jump straight up, you could jump lateral, you could jump forward. Uh, so in this case, we're just gonna do a depth jump where we're landing and then moving laterally. Uh, three sets of five on that one. We're gonna probably alternate left and right with that lateral jump. Uh, med ball jump throw. So this is like a long jump, but with a chest pass. And again, we're focusing on that, that power creation, adding a little bit of load with that med ball. And then as we move into the season, maybe we're just putting a basketball in an athlete's hand and doing that same movement pattern, but unloaded and at max speed. So preseason, just a little bit of load. Uh, off season, you may have seen the same movement pattern, uh, but with heavy, heavy load. So it might be a, have been catching a hang clean. Uh, so that was really heavy loaded. As we moved in the preseason, we got a little bit faster with a little bit less load. And then as we move in season, we're gonna probably do almost no load and then really fast because that's most sport specific. And then moving into a trap bar deadlift. So this is actually a good pairing here, moving from the fast med ball jump, but also training a trap bar deadlift, which is gonna be really high uh, power output, really heavy, 85% one rep max. So you can see the sets and reps are the same as the back squat from day one. Um, so two heavy lower extremity loaded movements there between day one and day two. And then again, working a pulling exercise, an inverted row, three sets of eight, and then moving into a Bulgarian split squat with a back leg up on a bench, getting some mobility work in there and some load. Uh, maybe doing that with a single dumbbell in the opposite hand to work that glute medius of the stance leg. That's a really good way to do it. Um, but we're gonna do this with an eight rep max load. So whatever these athletes can do for eight reps, maybe they were doing this with eight reps at the end of their last cycle off season. And as they move into the preseason, we're gonna take that eight, eight rep max load and work that eight rep max load for five reps here. And then ending with just some weighted push-ups. So a lot of the athletes that we're working with with basketball are gonna be these scrawny tall guys, especially high school and college level. Uh, so we really do wanna put these heavy loaded exercises in to build up their frame. So pushing and rows, uh, those aren't really that sport specific, but we do need to be powerful and big and, and actually have a good grasp on the ball and strength that way. Um, so that's where we wanna think about uh, putting these exercises in and not just doing a, a ton of jumping every workout. All right guys, so I hope that gives you some good ideas in terms of what types of exercises and how to program for strength conditioning for basketball players. If this was helpful, make sure you go ahead and smash that like button. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram at The Movement System. If you wanna learn more about strength conditioning for basketball and see some of my other strength conditioning related podcasts, go ahead and check out The Movement System Podcast. All right guys, thanks and we'll catch you in the next one.